One of the best investments I've ever made is something called Sonarworks. And if you're not familiar, what it does is it corrects the room response of where you're mixing or it corrects the response of your headphones and makes it a more accurate, neutral listening environment. So you can know that what you're hearing is actually what things sound like. And that is incredibly helpful when what you do is make music for a living or record audio, or mix, master audio. You need to know that what you're hearing is what other people are gonna hear, or at least as close as possible. So Sonarwork lets you correct the environment you're in or the headphones you're mixing on and gets you a lot closer to that goal of a neutral mixing environment. And while I love it, there are a couple workflow complaints that come up from most people that use it that I know and talk to, and I've encountered those problems too, but I did find a fix for it. And that's what I want to get into today. We've got Sonarworks system-wide and we've got Sonarworks the plugin. And we're going to look at both, compare the pros and the cons for both of them, and then discuss what you do if you don't like either of those options and you want the best of both worlds. And that's where we're going to end. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome, my name is Malcolm Owenflad, and if you enjoy learning about mixing and recording and mastering audio, you should subscribe to this channel because that's all I talk about here. To start this video off, I think we're gonna talk about Sonarworks the plugin, and then we'll do system-wide, and then finally, the fix that is gonna give you the best of both worlds. Sonarworks the plugin, that is right here. You just drop it on any track inside of your DAW, well, actually on any track that is gonna give you the output of whatever you're working on. So in my case, I've thrown it on a master fader. Depending on your DAW, you might have like a control room plugin in slot but for pro tools the master bus or on your two bus and that loads sonarworks reference right in there and it allows us to implement the correction profiles we have right onto the master bus so for me i've got the sennheiser hd 650 loaded in which is the profile for these exact headphones and i can just turn that on or off and if i wanted to switch to my neumanns i could just go and click that and now my speakers would actually be corrected and honestly, that's a great way to do it. This is a super low latency plugin, so you don't have to worry about bogging down your session and it's gonna provide the correction that is meant to do. Where the issue arises is in a few other areas. For example, you want to be listening through your studio monitors or studio headphones through the corrected profile all the time, probably. Like what if you wanna to listen to a song on Spotify or Apple Music or something like that? You throw on the tune and it doesn't have that correction. So your ears are like, what's going on? This doesn't sound right. <laughs> a huge part of being an audio engineer is learning your room and learning your speakers and learning your headphones so that you can make accurate decisions. So you want that to always be the same. You don't want it to change. So one big problem with this plugin format is that it only works in the DAW. You can't use it when you're listening to Spotify or on YouTube or something like that. And that's kind of a deal breaker for me. But like I said, I've got a fix for that coming up. And now the other thing about the plugin that is like really dangerous to me is that if you forget to take it off when you print the mix, you've just accidentally like destroyed your mix and you might not even know because it's gonna sound corrected as you listen to it, right? When you think about it, this is essentially, to make it simple, an EQ curve that we're applying here. And that EQ curve, the changes from this, our uncorrected line of uh, like, this is the EQ response of these headphones, is being corrected into this. So all of those EQ cuts and boosts are then gonna be printed onto your mix. So when you actually print the mix, you wanna bypass this plugin or make it inactive entirely so that you can't have that going onto the actual mix file that you're printing. And then you would email it to your clients or whatever from there. So that's kind of scary. If you forget to do that, you're gonna accidentally get some angry mix notes back. <laughs> now, luckily, all of these problems are actually solved by option two, kind of. And that is system-wide. Sonarworks system-wide is the same thing that you see in the DAW right here, but just living on the browser of your computer, essentially, in the Finder. If I wasn't on the screen right now, I've got too many things up here, you would see a little logo up on the top bar of my laptop, and you could click that and that would open this. And it is the same app running, but it's gonna process all audio running through your computer. This is like, right at the end of the chain. So if you watch something on YouTube, it should run through this. If you have Pro Tools running or any DAW of your choice, it should all go through this. If you are listening to an audio file from the Finder window of your computer, 
or out of your email. It doesn't matter if you're listening to something on your computer, it goes through this before you hear it. And because of this, it means that you can learn your speakers and learn your headphones and learn your environment because it's always gonna have that correction applied. You still have to remember to choose the right profile. So if you throw your headphones on, remember to go turn on the headphone profile, otherwise things will get weird, but it's always on. So if you're listening to Spotify on YouTube, whatever, you're covered it's gonna be corrected. I love that. And the other issue of the correction being applied to a mix that you're printing in your DAW is also fixed because this is running outside of the DAW. So when you print a mix in whatever your DAW of choice is, it is happening internally and then it is being run out to your system audio where Sonoworks is now running with system-wide and then the correction's being applied. So there's no risk of accidentally applying this correction to what you're gonna to send to your clients or release to the world. That's really good. <laughs> you don't want that. Of course, while this solves those problems, it actually comes with some more problems. And that is mainly kind of just like it being stable or usable. And what I mean by that is that it seems to have issues with like clocking and and gets kind of weird. So to give you some examples, if I have Pro Tools open and I'm working away with Sonarworks system wide run and it's doing good, and then I click onto Spotify and try and play something. Sometimes there's like a clocking issue and what sound parade is meant to go to and it kind of glitches out. Or the same thing if I try and play something out of Finder, I just open the session again. Like it just gets weird sometimes and doesn't always run smooth and it slows you down, honestly. And that can kind of be a bummer. And I've heard of other people with it just quitting unexpectedly. And overall it just, doesn't provide a great user experience. I should note that I'm running Sonarworks Reference 4 and there is a newer one called Sound ID. So some of these problems may be resolved, but for me, I haven't been able to get it to run smoothly until I thought up this idea. And that is solved by something called Audio Hijack. Audio Hijack is this very handy and cool tool that I didn't know existed until a colleague of mine recommended it to me. And it allows you to take audio from anywhere and to send it to anywhere else. And it seems to work just flawlessly. It's amazing. They don't know I'm making this video. I bought it with my own money. It's just that good. I just like, holy cow, this thing's real awesome. So this is a chain I've created from the modules available here. This isn't gonna be a tutorial on how to use Audio Hijack, but I want you to understand why it works and how it solves a problem. And essentially we're coming out of Pro Tools through this chain, which you can ignore everything other than the one that says Sonarworks here. And this is a plugin. This is Sonarworks the plugin, not Sonarworks system-wide. And that's kind of the genius of the system is that Audio Hijack allows me to kind of manipulate the system-wide of my computer and I can insert plugins on it. I can insert any plugin I own actually into it, which is really cool if you wanna get creative and mess with whatever you want. <laughs> but I've loaded a couple instances of Sonarworks. I've got one for my speaker profile, one for my headphone profile. So you just turn it on and off. Now, the advantage is, is that I get all the perks of system-wide, like being able to use this while I'm listening to Spotify or watching YouTube. I also can't print it onto my mix. That's like, that destructive thing is gone. There's no risk of that at all because it, it runs outside of my DAW, so not in Pro Tools for me. And then finally, it's stable. The plugin, for whatever reason, is just rock solid, no clocking issues, doesn't get glitchy or laggy. Latency is not a problem. It just works where system-wide just doesn't sometimes. And if you want to get really creative with this tool, you can do all sorts of things. Like you, you could start throwing EQs or compressions into the chain and then like seeing how that works to the song you're listening to on Spotify. So you could essentially attempt mastering something you hear like a Led Zeppelin song on Spotify if you wanted and just like mess with it or look with, at it with an analyzer and see what's happening, which can be really cool to see how the EQ curve of their low end is shaped, for example. It's a powerful thing and this tool just lets you do all of it. But first and foremost, this is a about how to fix Sonarworks and make it actually run stable and without the risk of accidentally screwing up your session. And this is the solution. Just grab Audio Hijack, make a scene like this and insert it there. You'll thank me later, I promise. Kind of a weird one, it's a niche one, but if you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, I love hearing from you. And I'll see you in the next one because there's another video coming up for you right here and here. Okay, bye.